Hi there, I thought I'd just do a very quick blog about how we shot um, the underwater film Narissa that I put up recently. So it was literally just a two minute underwater film. I've got no experience shooting underwater, nor the rest of the crew. We purely wanted to have a go at shooting something under there and um, sort of put our skills to the test really. So we shot on a 550D using the um, Diker Pack, which is basically like a plastic bag that you put your DSLR in and it's, you know, it's waterproof. We were going to shoot on a 5D originally, but I was a bit worried about putting my um, 5D in here because it's, it's not an expensive housing and I wasn't sure how waterproof it would be, which we'll come on to later. We had a four-way Kina Flow light that we'd hired in from Panelux and um, we used some blue tar pooling to try and cover the end of the pool. And that, I can tell you, is far harder than we expected it to be. Trying to drape a blue tar pooling in water is just one problem after another. So we had like Dunwell weights to try and weigh it down, but um, it was so difficult trying to get it straight and flat. And um, that, was, that was an issue that took quite a lot of sorting out, which we hadn't expected to come across, actually. Um, lighting worked quite well. It was a soft source light, so we had, you know, we had we had the operator in the pool with that, and we had to get quite, you know, fairly close. And um, in some of the wider shots, it's you, if the image isn't great, we couldn't really get enough light on there. But um, you know, I think for a first of a go, we're, we're happy with it. It looks okay. The Diker pack itself, that that's an interesting one actually. I'm glad I didn't put my 5D in it because it did it leaked ever so slightly. It wasn't anything major, but sort of towards the end of the shoot, we had noticed that um, through the bottom of the lens here, I think it's where the finger holes are, it's like a pinhole leak. Um, I haven't bothered checking it thoroughly yet to find out exactly where it was, but it just meant that water was gradually starting to seep in under the lens, which was fine for about five minute takes, but then it meant taking everything out, drying it off, and um, I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't recommend this for anything other than a swimming pool. I think outside in salt water, if you're going deep, it's, it's, it's not designed for that. So all in, I'd say, you know, it was, um, it was a really fun little project to try and do. Um, I think we really underestimated how hard it would be to shoot underwater. Um, this is nothing like a professional standard we know, but it was, it was good practice. And I think I definitely, I think we'd definitely like to have a go doing it again, using a proper underwater housing, really. So hopefully you'll like the film. You won't think it looks too bad. And um, this has given you a little insight into how we made it.